Hey, howdy y'all. Welcome back to another one of my videos. Uh, new Calandra. What else can be said? I am super excited for this. I love Calandra. Marius told me to listen to both versions of this, the regular version and the instrumental version. This is kind of becoming just like a Marius request channel. He's kind of taking over my requests lately, but they've all been good. So I'm not going to complain. Anyway, New Calandra, State of the World. If you don't know, I well, I did my reaction video to Brave New World, and then I listened to the entirety of the Line album on my own. I didn't, I didn't do a reaction video to it, but I listened to all of it, and I love it. It's amazing. I, I think it's a perfect album. And now they dropped a new track, State of the World. So let's get into this and see what I'm in for. Let's go. I'm hyped. It's weight on my shoulders, demanding my time. Something is missing, it's hard to stay sane. Why do the answers seem lost and arcane? May Off to a good start. Stop once and for all and cast off. Ooh, good melody. Good little harmonic change there, I like that. This is making me cry. What the heck? <laughs> this is so beautiful. That little Pickardy third major twist is really good. The state of the world has been on my mind, demanding my conscience and all of my time. Was there ever an age where it all made sense? 
Or am I reminiscing about lost innocence? Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. And there's just some credits. Wow. That's... That's amazing. That's one of their best songs. After listening to the, the full line album, The Line, the full album, The Line, after listening to that, uh, I think my favorite songs off that were Borders and Wonderland. And this is up there with those. I don't know if like where I'd place it. If I had to rank like a top three, I don't know where, but those are my favorite Calandra songs so far. Oh, wow. That was good. It was very, it was very emotionally charged. It was very, like, you know, it just, it hits you at a core level, like with everything going on in the world today, with all the war and everyone just being actively hostile to everybody. And it's just like, can't we all just get along at some point? Like, it's getting a bit ridiculous. But wow, man, that was good. Yeah, very simple chord progression, actually. It was just like here. What? Whoa. Where did. I swear I didn't hit that. I didn't hit that. My keyboard just does this sometimes. I'll just be chilling and then it thinks that I hit a random note. I in no way would ever hit C there. Why would I hit C? That ruins the whole chord. It's like, I. <laughs> that's so stupid. I don't understand why it does that. It might be a faulty thing with my. MIDI keyboard, it might be a thing with the program that I use, I have no clue. But it happens like rarely. What what am I saying? It doesn't happen too often, so I just kind of ignore it. Uh yeah. And then you had like the where where did that piano come in? Yeah. It's a very simple piano melody. Instrumentally, it's very simple. And then it's just these three chords. Sometimes it'll go to that major one chord, which is a Picardy third. I I mentioned that in my um, what was it? What was it? Uh, time the Valuator, I think. I mentioned that in my Time the Valuator video, where if you take a minor chord, like a minor one chord, and then you make it major, that's called a Picardy third, and it makes for some really cool moments in this song when you got like this it's a pretty interesting chord progression but i think the main draw of this song is with the lyrics obviously and the music reflects that in that it it doesn't go too crazy with any sort of musical intricacies that would take away from the message of the lyrics so it that's why it's mainly just these three chords with maybe like a Picardy third major one chord in there at some point. And it just goes in between those three chords like the entire time and then it builds and builds and builds and builds to the ending. Right. And it's it's a it's a it's a folk songy style thing. So it's got that folk songy verse sort of what's it called? Strophic, I think it is. Let me double check this so I'm not lying to you. But I I think um I think strophic is when it's just verse, 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 verse. Yes. All right. I looked it up. I was correct. Strophic form is when it's just verse, verse, verse. It's not really a chorus part. It's just the same part repeated, which happens a lot in folk music. If you listen to any European folk music, Norse folk music, um, Celtic folk music, like any of that kind of stuff, it's usually a lot of strophic form stuff where it's just the verses and then the instrumentals change slightly in between like one of my favorite albums of all time that i have up on my wall that i'm going to talk about at some point is alterum by julie fallis it's a, a scottish celtic folk album and a lot of the songs in there are in that strophic form so i'll get to making an analysis video on that eventually i think i mentioned it before but i have it all scripted out i just haven't done it so i have i am i'm it's the video is already i have my script I have everything, all the points I want to hit for, hit for all the songs. So all I have to just do is sit down and do it. But I've been busy with other stuff, and then I just also, also forget. I want to listen to the instrumental version of this now, because Marius told me to. I 
I mentioned it in my Brave New World video as well, but I love their use of folk instruments where you've got like the the really breathy breathy sounding strings. That happens I I, I pulled up a video in that video, so go watch that video. But I put I just said video like six six times. But I pulled up a video in that reaction of a guy playing the I forgot what it's called specifically, but it's some sort of string folk instrument where the strings aren't pressed against a fingerboard like they are usually, but they're just sort of pressed and held suspended in midair and then you just play the strings and it gives it that airy breathy quality to it and it sounds really cool. And that's kind of what's going on with this. You get some interesting sounds with that kind of instrument. It feels like a movie soundtrack. I'll try to point out some more of the differences with just the instrumental version. Right now it's just kind of going between those three chords. You get some lower strings in there. Ooh! That was one change. What in the world am I hitting? I played the wrong thing in my in my left hand, sorry. So going from here, it goes from a one to a seven inverted. It's like this. Which I guess is technically like a five of three. If you know anything about music theory but you've got that and then it goes to that chord again so it's just a different sort of variation of generally that same progression just adding a little something to keep it interesting that part too that whole thing all together it was like And then back to that. That's a lot of cool stuff. So this this part that I mentioned where it goes to the three, and then it goes back to the six, and then we go a five, and then a four, which is usually minor in a minor key. But here, they make it major. Oops, I don't know why I did that, sorry. It just gives that sort of ethereal magical quality to it. There's some there's some movie soundtrack or something that has that chord progression. I'm trying to think of what it is. I can't think of it specifically, but something that has that progression that it's reminding me of. I can't quite put my finger on it right now. Anyway, let's keep going. There's a little bit different stuff in there. They did that progression again. So it uses that that major four again. Major three, major four, back to the minor one. What is this? I'm not sure what instrument that is. 
It's doing those little things. The string is bringing out the rhythm and, and um, filling out the harmony more. That chord again. There's that, there's that Piggy third I was talking about. The way it builds is incredible. Another Piggy third. And that breathy string instrument comes back in. The bowed, bowed lyre. I forgot. It had a specific name, didn't it? Or was it just bowed lyre? I don't know. Crazy good song. Wow. Yeah, that's up there with some of Calandra's best. That's wild. I love it. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, this is going on all my playlists. I'm going to be listening to this a lot. I'm hyped for whatever new stuff they have coming out. Because I don't know when... When their last album was released. Let me check. Just looking up on Spotify real quick. Uh, oh, 2022, it looks like. Oh no, this was... Never mind. This is a, this is a soundtrack. Kingdom 2 Crowns Norse Lands. Is that for a game or something? That's what yes, it is for a game. Okay. Weird. Alright. Well, yeah, they so it looks like their last oh last solo release was 2021 with the line. Uh, that's that's the album that I've listened to a bunch. So this is the the new Oh, I love that they put both the normal and instrumental versions on their Spotify. I'm feeling like out of breath today. I don't know what's up. Maybe I'm sick or something. Maybe I have COVID. I don't feel like I have COVID other than that. You hear that? You hear my my slight like Pennsylvania accent coming out? COVID. COVID. <laughs> I went to school in Pennsylvania for four years, even though I live in Illinois. So I have a little bit of like a, a mix of a Chicagoan and Pennsylvania accent at times. It's, it's weird. Anyway. Uh, yeah, hope you all enjoyed this video. I loved analyzing this song. This one was incredible. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in my next video. Bye-bye.